Hello there, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build this beautiful line chart uh, using ReCharts, a uh, charting library for React Framework. Now in this uh, uh, graph I'm showing you a, a quarterly sales for mobile phones and I've got five data points and if I hover over the data points, uh, the data points uh, enlarge and uh, you'll see a tooltip. And the tooltip is animated as you move around to different points. It will follow you around uh, in a smooth animated way. And if I uh, resize the window, uh, it, it's also responsive. And as you can see, it's resizing perfectly. And even on smaller screens, uh, you can see the graph quite beautifully and it's usable as you can see here if you'd like to see more tutorials like this please subscribe to my channel thank you and if you go to recharts.org uh, website uh, you get more information about how to use recharts library uh, as you can see on the front page uh, you can the sample of the code uh, that outputs uh, a, a, a simple line chart so out of the box uh, it looks pretty good so and the code seems very readable as well. Now, if I go to examples, uh, you get more uh, a, a sort of a gallery of all the uh, charts that you can uh, create with uh, recharts. Uh, as you can see here, I'm looking at a simple line chart. Now it's got uh, it's got what it's got a display on the left hand side what it renders, and then it's got a code on the right hand side. So if you look through the code, uh, you know the uh, you'll have a, you'll always have a, a data part which is sort of a it's an array with objects inside of it. So each object is represented one item on the y-axis. As you can see here, page one has a three different y values. So this means uh, that you're drawing uh, three line charts. Uh, so as you can see, all, all the objects have three values and it's got a name and three values. So the name is what is the uh, on the what, on the x-axis would be the item on the x-axis and the values would be the values on the y-axis. So as you can see, uh, uh, you'll have uh, uh, one item, uh, one object for each uh, item on the x-axis and a number of values for uh, on the y-axis. So so this is uh, representing two two lines. So it's got three values here. So if I go to the render part. It's uh, okay. So in the render part, uh, you know the chart will uh, be uh, you create. So I'm looking at the render part now. So the render part will always have a wrapper. Uh, if you want to make it responsive, then you start with a responsive container wrapper. Then you have a, a wrapper for the type of line chart that you're going to have. Uh, in uh, well, the, the type of chart. Uh, in this case, we're we're having a line chart, but it can also be a pie chart. If you look look on the left hand side. You, you have all sorts of uh, charts there. So, uh, so you, for each chart, you have a different wrapper. So, in this, for this chart, we're using a line chart wrapper, and within the line chart uh, wrapper, you have uh, the children for uh, representing all the elements that you have for that line chart. So, you can have a Cartesian uh, a grid, uh, axis, uh, x-axis, y-axis, tooltip, legend, and uh, the line itself. So. The line element is the one that plots the the data items. So uh, from the data, uh, ob uh, the, the array of objects, we had like three values, U, PV, and AMT. So in this line item uh, element, we've got data key. This is quite crucial. Uh, the data key will point to the data item that you're uh, referring to. So for, their, uh, for this particular one, we're referring to the PV values, so it's uh, looking at the PV values for each one of them, and then it will uh, plot the line for the PV values, and the the second line will have plot the lines for the UV values. So that's what it's doing here. So it's quite simple to follow. Uh, so you got to just uh, make sure that uh, you know you you're plugging in the data uh, correctly. Uh, so in in the line chart, we specify the data. Uh, here, so data equals color brackets data. So it's pointing to the data there, as you can see here. So, 
and then particular line will point to the y values. So that's how you connect the data with your chart. So uh, for demo purposes, I'm going to copy this into an app.js file and then uh, we can see a demo of this running. Okay, to follow along with this uh, tutorial, uh, you would have already have, uh, installed a React app using uh, npx create React app. And as you uh, as you can see here, I've already set up uh, a standard app already, and it's it's running on the browser with the standard logo running. Okay, so so now what we're going to do is we're going to just copy bits of the code from the recharts uh, documentation uh, to get up and running quickly. So I'll go back to the recharts documentation page and we was looking at the simple line chart. Okay, so what we're going to do is first we're going to copy over uh, the import uh, line and the data array. Okay, so we're just going to copy just that part and if we go back so I'm going to just paste it at the top. Okay, so now we're going to go back and copy the chart rendering the JSX part. Okay, this part. Now, uh, the, the, the sample code they have here is uh, using a class, classes uh, a component. So we're not using classes component, so we don't, gonna, we don't need that part. So we just... Uh, concerned with the return part okay so everything uh, under the, the uh, specifically the JSX part so we're just going to copy the JSX part okay so it begins with, so we're going to copy over the response container and all the child elements in the JSX part so I'm just going to right click copy and go back to my code and so I'm going to just paste it in the return part here as you can see, I'm just going to delete that. Okay, so I'm just going to, so I just got the empty return. Okay, so I'm just going to paste that in there. So that's all you need to do. Okay, now we need to um, install recharts. Okay, so it's, it's, let me just, uh, okay, so we got, we're importing recharts, but we haven't installed recharts yet. So that's what we're going to do next. Go, go to new terminal and it's npm install recharts. Okay, that's going to take a few seconds. Okay, so that's loaded. So I'm going to close that. And so if, if I go back into, now I save that and okay, then I'll go to the browser and let's see our app. Okay. Now our app is not rendering, so if I go into inspect, okay, uh, and, and go into the body, okay, this is where it's, it should be rendering under the root. So it's just putting an empty um, uh, recharts response to container. Now it's got width 100%, uh, height 100%. Now our root is, uh, there's no width for that. There's no width for body. So, uh, out the box, uh, the, this will not work. So to make it work, we need to go and change that to uh, width 100% and, as, and we need to give it an aspect uh, ratio of 3, which means uh, we'll have width 100% and we'll have the height as uh, uh, one third of that. So if I save that, okay, and then go to there. Now it's working. Okay, so out the box, uh, you need to change that to uh, that responsive value uh, to get it working. Otherwise, uh, you know, you're gonna uh, you're gonna figure, you're gonna like uh, so. Otherwise, it, it won't work. Okay, so in the demo, uh, uh, they've got a configuration to make it work. So. Uh, to make it work on a, a, a you know a, a standard React app out the box, then you need to adjust that. Okay, so now it's responsive. So if I if I minimize the screen and then uh, just adjust it, so it's responsive. So out the box, this is how you make it work. Okay, so 
we have a, a standard uh, line chart uh, up and running now. So next thing we need to do is think about how we're going to customize it. Uh, so we, we need to know what colors we're going to be using. So I'm going to just uh, paste at the bottom here uh, what uh, colors we're going to be using just for reference. So I've commented it out so that you know it doesn't interfere with the code. So this is just for reference purposes. So uh, for the background color, I'm going to have this uh, sort of a, 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 a dark bluish color. And for text color, it's going to be white. And the horizontal grid color is going to be a sort of a dark grayish color. And I've got the, the chart line uh, is a sort of a, a violet uh, color. And uh, it's also used as the data point color. Um, so the data point has a fill color and also a stroke color. So the stroke color is a bit lighter violet color. So we got that, we will refer back to this later on. So that was just for reference. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the top now, okay, um, and to the import section. So we've imported uh, uh, these modules from ReCharts. So, uh, so we imported these uh, uh, modules from ReCharts. Uh, so uh, we don't really gonna be, we're not, really going to be using all of these uh, modules. Uh, uh, we're not going to be using the legend, so I'm just going to take that out and uh, leave the rest in. Okay, so I'm going to be using the line chart, the line, x-axis, y-axis, Cartesian grid, tooltip, and responsive container. So the, the, the line chart is the, the chart type. So y you can choose other types uh, like pie charts and uh, area charts. So we're using line chart. And uh, the line chart, uh, to, to, uh, to draw the lines, you need a line module. And also for all, uh, for all charts, you need an x-axis and a y-axis. Uh, and uh, to have the grid, uh, to show the grid, you need a Cartesian grid. And to show the tooltip, you need the tooltip. And, uh, and responsive uh, container, as we've seen, uh, is, is a container to make it responsive. So these, these are the things that you need uh, for drawing the line chart. Okay, next uh, we're going to go to the data section. Okay, so we're going to be uh, putting in our own data. As you recall, each object is, a, uh, is an item on the x-axis. So for for our chart, we're 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 gonna have um, a chart for displaying the. So for our chart, oh, we're gonna be uh, displaying the sales figures for mobile phones. So for each month, for each quarterly, sorry. Okay, so we're gonna change. The, so the the first uh, item in the object is gonna be your x-axis uh, item label so uh, for the first one we're gonna it's gonna be january okay so i'm just gonna put january in. okay and then we're not gonna have uh these data items we're just gonna have one data item and we're gonna call it iphone and that and that's gonna be the value so we're gonna repeat this for all of them and take out uh, the ones that we don't want. So that's what I'm going to do next. So as you can see, uh, I've changed all our data to suit our needs. So I'm just going to change this to a capital I because I, I, I use capital I everywhere else. Okay, so so this data will represent uh, quarterly sales for mobile phones. And uh, on the x-axis, I'm going to have uh, January, March, May, july and october so these are going to be my x-axis and and the y values are going to be the iphone values for each month so that and that's what the whole data set looks like okay so so if i save this and have a quick look at the chart okay so i've got i've got an error uh so legend is not defined so as you recall i deleted legend okay so uh when uh but i'm still referring it to in the JSX. So what we need to do is just take that out. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so if I go to the JSX uh, part and where it's rendering, I can just take out the legend. Okay, I don't need the legend. All right, so if I save that and take a look. Okay, so we got we got uh, the data. Uh, we got the, some sort of graph showing, but it's an empty graph. So uh, uh, it's no surprise because we haven't really plugged the data in, and uh, it's it's not really uh, accurate. So that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to come back to the rendering part again. Okay, so. Uh, now I'm going to simplify this. Now, um, as you recall, in the uh, in, in the demo chart, we had two lines, so we don't need two lines. We just need one line. Okay, so I'm going to take out uh, one of the lines. All right. Now, uh, in when when uh, when you're plugging the data into your uh, rendering uh, JSX part of it, uh, you need to make sure the data is plugged in. So the so in the line chart, we've got a uh, which is the main wrapper for all your uh, uh, the, the the chart elements. Okay, so so the line chart will have the attribute for the data. So as you can see here, the data is pointing to data. So we haven't changed the data name, so that's okay. So if you change the data name here, then you need to change it here. Okay, so. And also in the line chart, we have a width, which is the width of the the chart and the height of the chart. And then we can give it a margin and, uh, uh, you know, top, right, left, and bottom. So, and that, that will give it sort of, you know, uh, a sort of a padding uh, for, for your chart. Uh, okay, so then the card, we got the Cartesian. Uh, all right. Before we do the Cartesian grid, I'll, I'll go to the line. Okay, the the line uh, uh, has to indicate what where it's getting its y-axis value from. So, as you recall, is uh, this the data? It's in the data key attribute. So the data key attribute is pointing to uh, the PV value. Now, uh, as you recall, we deleted the PV value. But we replaced it with uh, we just got one y values, which is the iPhone. So as you can see here, so we need to use that that uh, label or um, item variable uh, in here. So I'm gonna call it iPhone. So I save that and go to the chart. Okay, so so we got the chart displaying as we want it okay so it's displaying the the iphone value so if if i hover over it uh, it uh, it shows the details okay so i'm going to go back now right so we've got the line chart um, so we're happy with that okay so so you can control the width the height uh, and and the data that you're going to plug in on the line chart uh, element. Okay, next uh, we're going to go to the Cartesian grid. Okay, so the Cartesian grid, uh, it's got a, uh, it's, it's got a stroke dash array. Now, in the Cartesian grid, uh, you have horizontal grid and a vertical grid line. Okay, you got horizontal grid lines and you got vertical grid lines here. So these are the things that you can control. Okay, so we just want horizontal uh, grid lines. Okay, we don't want vertical grid lines. So uh, in order to do that, we need to specify the horizontal and vertical. So uh, so there is an attribute called horizontal, uh, which we set to. Uh, and then there's a vertical attribute. Okay, and we're going to set it to blank. Okay, so if I save that, now if I go back and 
Okay, so now I've got no uh, no grid at all. Now, if we want to show a grid, we do true. So we want horizontal. So if I save that and go back, so I've got horizontal grid now. I haven't got the vertical. Okay, so so to customize it, uh, you need to put both of these in and set it to true and false. Out the box, uh, it's it's set to true. So if there's nothing there, then both will show. So if you want to control any one of them, then you need to uh, put in the horizontal and the vertical and set one to true and one to uh, false or, you know, uh, or just leave it blank. Uh, as I've done the vertical, I've, I've not given it a value. So, but you need uh, the vertical attribute there and just don't give it a value. So, uh, otherwise, uh, it, you know, it, it will show again. So if I go back, but I delete this and go back. So it's showing both. So, so, that, so you need both of them uh, and you need to set it to true or false. And, uh, and the stroke dash array, uh, you set it to three three is sort of it gives you uh, uh, three dashes uh, by three dashes. Uh, but if I, I I just want one dash, and that that should give me a sort of a, a, a consistent line. So so uh, so that that will. Uh, so if you just want one consistent line, then put the stroke dash arrow to one. So better still, we can just leave this out. We, we, we only need this attribute if we're going to have it dashed. And as set, setting it dash with the one uh, is the same as just leaving it out. Because uh, if, you, if you just leave out the attribute, it will just draw a Cartesian grid. And with the, you know with the horizontal true and vertical false. So if I, if I if I quickly look at the chart, so I still got a, a horizontal uh, grid line there, and not not the vertical. So that's that's what we want. So uh, yeah, you don't need to use the dashed array. Uh, okay. So the next uh, we're going to go to the x-axis, right? So the x-axis has a data key value, uh, which is pointed to name. So this is going to be used as the label so if i go back and you can see on the label we've got january march uh, this is going to be the label name so uh, what we do uh, what we're saying here is you know use that as an, a label name okay so in the y-axis it will automatically figure out what the, uh, what the label is because it's going to be using the uh, y values uh, as as the sort of the tick points as they say uh, so so the x-axis, you give it, uh, you point it to the, the month, uh, where the month is. So, uh, so we, we just named it as name. Uh, you can, so, so if you, if you change this to, uh, you know, month, it will, uh, uh, then you can refer it to as month. So it, it depends on, you know, how you structure your data. And so, and, and that's what, uh, how you, and that depends on how you link it to your, uh, uh JSX part, uh, when you're rendering it. So that's the x-axis and that's the y-axis. Okay, the tooltip. Uh, so out of the box, uh, you just have to uh, put in that tooltip element, and it will show the tooltip. So we can go to the tooltip now. So, so the tooltip uh, out of the box, it will sh it will uh, it will show you the name and the value. So and uh, it's already sort of animated as well. So uh, out of the box, you know, er er everything works quite quite nicely. So. Uh, so if I if I remove if you don't want to dip, just remove that item and save it and then go back. There's no tooltip, as you can see. Okay, so I'll go back and then just put the tooltip back in. Okay, and so that should be okay. So just want to make sure. Just, yeah, okay, tooltip back. Okay. So you can uh, uh, you know you can leave the tooltip out if you want. Okay, next uh, we're going to go for the line, okay, uh, the actual line that's going to be drawn uh, for our chart, All right? So this points to the y, y value, uh, uh, which is the iPhone 
value in our data chart iPhone for each month. So it's going to use that as uh, the data points and the data type. If I leave the data type out, okay, uh, the, there's two types. There's the curved, uh, the monotone is the curved type. So if I if I delete that and and save and then so it draws a line, whereas previously it was a curve. So if I go back and change it and put it back in, so type equals monotone, uh, it, it will give you a nice curve, like so. So so this is giving me a nice curve. So if you leave the type blank, it will just draw straight lines. Okay, so, uh, so it's nice to have a curved line. It looks better. Okay, so, and also you can control the, the stroke color, okay, and, and the active dot. Okay, so, if we go back, so the, the dots are what you see here. See, when, when you highlight it, or um, when your cursor goes over these points, uh, it will, uh, it will give a, a hover a style to it. There's a hover style to it. So as you can see, when you're not hovering over it, uh, it will uh, it will just have a sort of a small s circle as the point. But when you hover over it, it, it becomes a, uh, a a sort of a larger cir a a circle filled with a solid color. So if I go back and inspect this, so the active dot here it says uh, R. Uh, and it's a colon eight, which is the radius. So if if I make it something very large, and save, okay. So if I go back, so that's the actual radius of the dot. So as you can see, I've made it very large. So if we go back. So I just uh, change it to R eight, okay. So so that that controls. That's basically the active dot is. What is, uh, what is the style? It, the active dot is the styling for the dot when you hover over it, or when your cursor goes over it, or when it gets highlighted. So when it's not active, it has a a, a sort of a standard out the box default style. Okay, so I'm gonna cover this uh, uh, in a in a bit. A lot of these uh, elements, uh, they have attributes which are uh, sort of like the APIs uh, uh, of, for those elements. So if I go back to the documents site and I click on uh, the API, okay, then you have access to all the APIs uh, uh, for all the elements. So, uh, so here you got the chart APIs. So, so uh, the line chart. And this is the line chart API. So the, these are the things that it covers: the, the layout, the width, the height. We've used the width, the height, and the data. So, uh, and the margin. So it's got other things that on click. <coughs> it's got other things that on click and mouse enter move. So for more advanced stuff. So if uh, so, that's the line chart. Now the line chart has line elements. Okay. So these are the chart elements. So if you go, if I go to the Cartesian components. And then you have under the Cartesian components, uh, you have uh, the the chart elements uh, for the for particular charts. So for the line chart, we need to look at the line element under the Cartesian components. And this is the so this is the parent component, which is the line chart, and the child components is. Uh, Label and list. Okay, so uh, so this this is the API for the line uh, component. Okay, so if you go down, uh, so we, we've looked at the data key, uh, and it's got other x-axis ID and y-axis ID latent type. Uh, but what we're interested in the dot. Uh, we've looked at the active dot, and this is sort of the breakdown of how to use it. So so an active dot. Uh, takes in an object which is basically a, a styling object, uh, SVG styling. So we've got the, uh, if you see here, you've got the, the stroke and you can feed in the color and you can have stroke width 
and uh, that will be the width of uh, the, the outline. <coughs> so we'll have the stroke width, and it'll be the uh, uh, the thickness of the outline, and you have a radius. So uh, these these three things are usually what we can use to uh, uh, change the look and feel of the active dot. And it's the same with the the <coughs> the, ac uh, the actual default dot, dot that uh, the standard dot uh, when it's not active. So it has the same elements as well, so you can control it. So remember, we're feeding in an object, which is the style object. Uh, but you can also feed in uh, uh, things like other other components. Uh, so you, you can basically render uh, a different style of uh, uh, SVG element uh, by, by feeding in uh, some, uh, another component there. And you know you can you can feed it uh, another function. So what we're interested in uh, the the way you want to style it. So you you've, you feed in a sort of a style object like this, and it will style it for us. But uh, uh, as you can see, you you can give it different types of uh, functions and objects and elements there. So so it, it's good to come and look at uh, the API. And then you know uh, how to use it. Because otherwise you'll you'll be confused if you know when you look at a chart and you're trying to figure out oh why is it doing this and why is it feeding this in, so so that that's a little bit about the API of it. So we can go back and start the chart now. So from from the API we can start to style our standard dot now. So it's, so we're going to have an, a dot attribute and uh, inside curly brackets we're going to have an object. So it's sort of double curly brackets. And inside there, we're going to have a fill. I'm going to leave it empty at the moment. Uh, I'm going to fill in the color. And I'm going to have a stroke, which is also a color. And then I'm going to have a, a stroke width, uh, which is going to be a number. And remember, uh, if it's a number, then you don't put uh, uh, inverted commas around it. So it's going to be a two. So And then we're going to have a radius of, of uh, five. So now, um, uh, as you remember, I, I noted the colors that I'm going to use. So the fill color for the dot is um, is that one. I guess I'm just going to copy that and fill that in. And and the stroke color is that. It's going to be a lighter color. So if I save that and. And take a look at our chart now. Let me do a refresh. So our chart is sh taking shape now. So this is the color that uh, I wanted it to be. So uh, I, I, when we once we change the background color, uh, you know, you, you start to look better. Okay. So let's carry on with the styling. So next, I'm gonna add a background color to uh, to the body so I'm going to go into the index.js and index.css sorry and then I'm gonna under the body I'm gonna give it some styling so it's gonna be background color and I'm gonna oh, if I go back and just copy that color So background color is going to be that color, and I'm also going to have a text align and center, just to just to sort of uh, uh, tidy it up. And also, I'm going to have some margin at the top. Margin. Oops. say um, 2 em okay so I'll save that and if I there you go so it's so it's looking better now okay so so now I'm going to go back and uh, do the same for the active dot so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this and then just change the radius of the stroke width okay so 
So I'm going to copy the whole, uh, everything under the curly brackets for that attribute. So I'm just going to paste it in there. Okay, then I'm going to, in the radius, I'm going to give it uh, 10. And stroke width, and the stroke width is going to be a 5. So if I save that and take a look. Okay, so it's uh, it's taking shape now. So as you can see, there's a little bit cut off there. And that's uh, usually due to the margin at the top. So if I go back in there, uh, if I go to the top, okay, so the line chart has a margin at the top. So, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to add more margin at the top. Then it'll give it some uh, head space at the top. So it's, it's a bit like having a, a more padding so that uh, if there's an overflow, it will, it will show. Um, okay, so uh, I'll give it a 15 and see what that looks like. Okay, so, okay, so when I hover over it now, I can see that the dot okay so okay now we're gonna uh, uh, give the text color uh, for the x-axis and the y-axis so uh, to, to target the uh, the actual labels uh, you need to refer to it as tick and equals to and it, it will be uh, same sort of style and concept uh, where you're feeding in a, a style object so the fill color will be, uh, uh, we're going to have it white, so it's going to be ash ff. So let's just see that and make sure it's doing it. Okay, so so we do the same for the y axis as well. So, so it's going to be the same, just copy that and paste it for the y axis. So remember, yeah, um, uh, uh, to to find out what uh, how you style these things, you have to check back into the documentation, uh, the API, or the x-axis. So if I can quickly go to the x, uh, the uh, so I'm at. So if I go to the x-axis, and it will tell you how to uh, style it. So if we we'll go down, tick it's. It's quite a quite a long uh, list here, so it's the tick that we want. So, so that that that's how you style. So you can uh, use stroke or fill uh, to target it. So, okay. So next thing, I'm going to be targeting the tooltip. Okay. So I'm going to give it a sort of a darker background and lighter text. So if I go to the documentation, and I uh, it will be under the general components and tooltip. So this is the whole list of uh, the attributes or the the API setting uh, for tooltip. So uh, what I found is that there is so there are two different ways of targeting the the content. Uh, so you got uh, the item style and uh, which will take an object and it is basically a, uh, a styling object uh, and you have got the content style and we also want to uh, uh, switch off the, the the highlighting vertical line so which is the the cursor so these are the three things that uh, uh, we need to target so if we go back the cursor is this vertical line we don't want that Okay, and uh, the text is the content text, and then there's the item text. Uh, so that's what we're going to target next. So in the tooltip, I'm going to have an attribute for uh, content style, uh, which is going to be an object uh, which contains a ob uh, styling object, and an item style, which is also an object which uh, has a, a styling object, and then it's a cursor, uh, which uh, which is a true or false uh, a value. So uh, for the content style, I'm going to give it a background color of um, uh, sort of a, a, a darkish uh, 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 color that we've used. 
and then for the color for the text we're gonna have white okay and the item style which is gonna be the, sort of the is the p tag within within inside the two tag uh, tooltip uh, so I'm gonna give it a color of white as well so it, in the tooltip you know you have a header and a, a sort of a body body text and that's the item style is for the body text okay and the cursor I'm gonna set as false okay so this this should uh, uh, make the chart look better now. So if I go back, so refresh. Okay, so we've got a uh, a better a styled uh, tooltip now, and we don't have the horizontal uh, uh, a horizontal line. So it's looking much better now. Okay, so now we need to just uh, change the color of this and add a heading. If we go back, so. So we're going to target the Cartesian grid. Uh, so we're going to give it a stroke color. Oh. And I've got the color here. That's there. And go paste that in there. And then uh, to finish everything off, I'm going to add a header here. Okay, so uh, first I'm going to put a, a fragment, uh, so I'm going to wrap it around a fragment because uh, we're going to add an extra element at the top. So um, it's just going to be a H2 header and uh, I'm going to say quarterly sales figures. So, so we're just giving it a title there, save, and then we'll see our final. Okay, so it's just got to change this color on there. So we'll go to uh, app dot index dot css. H two color. So that sh should do it. So there you go. And I'm just quickly just give it a sh uh, uh, a width that will give it some breathing space on the sides. So I go to the app .js and we've made it width 100%. So we just put it 90%. Okay, so. So just to tidy that up. So all I've done is I've added a because I wanted to add a heading, I added a fragment there, and wrapped it around a fragment, um, and then added the header. So that's how I use um, I'll put extra text uh, to, uh, to for your uh, charts. Okay, so if I save that and tab, there you go. So one last thing, I'm gonna make this line a little bit thicker. So that uh, it, it, it has more or more of an impact. So uh, if I go back to the app.js and I give it a stroke width, stroke width of, uh, I'll give it to say a five. I'll save that. Okay, then go back. Okay, so that's that's got much more of an impact, and it, it's. Uh, looks much better so if I test the responsiveness on a mobile phone that looks really great okay so that's how you create beautiful charts uh, in uh, using recharts so if you like this um, tutorial and one more tutorials like this uh, please subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video